Uh, let the church say amen, amen. or yes. <laughs> RuPaul says, I do not impersonate females. How many women do you know who wear seven inch heels, four foot wigs, and skin tight dresses? He also says, I don't dress like a woman, I dress like a drag queen. <laughs> you see, Drag is bigger than just dress considerations, at least for RuPaul. It is trying to get at something far larger. We're all born naked, and the rest is drag, he says, which means that human nature at its core is fundamentally free and creative and playful, which leads to the big question, what will we do with our freedom if in some grand sense, we are all drag queens. Y'all are going to go out there and say, my pastor told me I was a drag queen. <laughs> yes, I did. If we are all in some grand sense a drag queen, what are we going to do with our drag? Now, one thing is to mock culture, which is really about taking back freedom. Culture wants people to play dumb, but no, RuPaul is too smart, smart for that. That's the mockery. And it's not only drag queens who have blown the lid on culture's lunacy and hypocrisy. He reminds us, comedians, rock stars, and even Bugs Bunny have celebrated careers on irreverence and challenging the status quo. Ancient cultures relied on drag queens, shamans, and witch doctors to remind each individual member of the tribe of their duality as male and female, human and spirit, body and soul. This is a great connection to make. Shamans and witch doctors and drag queens all were in ancient times living symbols of the fluidity at the heart of all humanity, and they still are and they wake up the sleepwalkers by poking at them, by making fun. Seven-inch heels, four-foot wigs, skin-tight dresses are all about making fun. Names like Jinx Monsoon, <laughs> Pearl Liaison, Trixie Mattel, Acid Betty, and a bunch of other names I can't say because this is G, G-rated community, G, rated G. They are hilarious. They're making fun of what too many people take too seriously, seriously enough even to hurt others or to kill. Matthew Shepard, Pulse. What will we do with our drag? Besides mocking culture, Another thing we get from RuPaul is the invitation to look back at ourselves growing up from a drag queen perspective. Remember the clip a moment ago when RuPaul invited folks to come up and speak to themselves when they were kids. Remember that? You were born naked, RuPaul says, but you've grown up to become a fierce drag queen. Here's a photo of you as a little bitty boy. Now, if you could time travel, what would you have to say to your little self? Now, we saw one of the four candidates. I want to share with you what Pearl had to say. Pearl came a little later in the video. We didn't see the whole thing because too many cuss words. So when it's Pearl's time, Pearl says, ah, oh God, I'd have to start with a warning. You're about to enter the toughest years of your life, and it's going to suck really bad for a long time, and people are going to mess you up and take advantage of you, and people are going to be looking at you from across the room for so many years, and you are not going to understand why. And Pearl cries and cries. And then RuPaul asks, do you understand why now? Pearl nods, because she can't talk. She just nods, yes, yes, yes. And then RuPaul says, you're a star, baby. Two quotes from RuPaul will help us make sense of what is happening here. Here's the first one. When you become the image of your own imagination, it is the most powerful thing you could ever do. And then this quote. 
if you are trigger happy and you're looking for a reason to reinforce your own victimhood, your own perception of yourself as a victim, you will look for everything to reinforce that. It all adds up to this now. To look at yourself from a drag queen perspective is to remember the pain of your life and to feel the temptation to reinforce your own sense of victimhood, but you don't. You step back from that. You choose to become the image of your own imagination. It is the most powerful thing you could ever do. Today, I want each of you to look at yourself from that fierce, powerful, drag queen perspective because you are a star. You are a star baby. And you are even more than that, according to RuPaul's gospel. There is yet another level to all of this. The truth is that you are an extension of the power that created the entire universe. The truth, he says, is that you are a spiritual being having a human experience. The human part of the experience is temporary. Think of it as a t-shirt and jeans. Your spiritual being is not temporary, it is eternal. Think of it as the sun and the moon. That is why the saying, you are born naked and the rest is drag, couldn't be more true. And this is the full and entire gospel. Our drag actually does not end with our nakedness, but extends even to include our physical human body and our basic individuality that comes with a name and a history. Before all of that, you were. You are eternal. A Vedanta Hindu would put it like this. Atman is Brahman. But RuPaul just says, you are God in drag. <laughs> Perhaps you came this morning really thinking that drag is just about a man wearing false eyelashes and a pussycat wig or it's just a woman wearing a pair of glued-on sideburns and an Elvis jumpsuit. But now you've heard the gospel of RuPaul. Perhaps you came this morning with eyes wide open to the ugly mediocrity and hypocrisy of this world. You were angry and bitter, but now you have heard the gospel of RuPaul. The biggest obstacle people ever face is their own limited perception of themselves. Abundance is the truth of who you are. Extravaganza eleganza is you. Don't let anybody steal that. Take that power back. Amen. <laughs>